In this video, we will see how to use Power BI Desktop with a simple walkthrough. We'll start with a CSV file, create a report, publish it to dashboard and see how the report looks. First of all, you must have a Power BI account. If you want to follow this through, create an account and download this particular sample CSV file. The process is like this. We will import the CSV, create the report using Power BI Desktop and then follow this. How do you get Power BI Desktop? Once you sign in, you will see the download button. Go here and download Power BI Desktop. Now we are going to use a sample file which is a simple CSV file. I am not going to use Excel at all throughout this demo. Each row here is a transaction. We have city, date, card type, expense type and so on. Now let's go into the Power BI desktop. This is the start screen. I'm going to close it and we can import the data from the menu. So we have a ribbon here and we have a few tabs. Data can be imported from various sources. In this case, I'm going to choose CSV. We will use the CSV file which we just saw. It's going to show you a preview of first few rows. Even if the data is large, the preview is shown quickly so that you can get an idea about how the data is. In this case, the data is quite clean, so I don't need to edit or clean it up or transform it in any way. So I'm going to just load it. In future walkthroughs, we will see more complex situations. Depending on the size of the data, loading will take some amount of time. Once loading is done, you will see the table here. Right now, we are in the report view and we have not yet created anything. If you just want to see the data, you can click on the data view, in which case it will show you the table. There are 26,000 plus rows here. This is equivalent to data model in Power Pivot. While importing what we saw is equivalent of Power Query in Excel. The third tab is about relationships, but that's required only when you have more than one table. In this case, we don't need it. So let's go and create a report. Report creation can be done in many ways. We choose the fields we want and then choose the visualization. I'm going to go to card type. It shows me the card type. Never mind the font size right now. I'm just going to say amount. So amount gets added there. I don't want to see it like this. This is called a table. As you can see here, this is the default. I want to see it as a bar chart. So I just click on it and it becomes a bar chart. And I want to create another visualization now. So I click outside in the empty area. Now I want to choose expense type and amount. Notice it found its place automatically and adjusted the available area. In this case, I'm going to choose a pie chart. All of us are familiar with a pie chart, but there is another nicer way of looking at data, which you want to look at from a proportionate point of view. That's called a tree map. So I'm going to use that this time. In addition to this, I just want to see total amount. So I just drag drop amount into an empty area and it shows me a bar chart because currently that was the default. But we have something very simple here called a card which shows me the amount like this. I'm going to resize it so that it doesn't occupy too much space. This is the overall amount which we are looking at. If you don't want to see it summarized like this, we can go to this area. This is called format. This is called fields. So in this case, I want to show this differently. I go to format area, go to data label and change the display from auto to none. So it actually shows me the real amount. I just copy pasted it because I also want to show the count. Right now it's a copy. So it's showing the same thing, but I go back to the fields area and here I can choose the summary. So this is volume. This is value. I may also want to see average, so I'm going to copy paste this again and I'm going to make this guy average. After doing this, I want to visualize the cities. 
So I'm going to drag and drop city and notice what happens. Because it's a location field, the field list itself changes and it has actually plotted all the cities. As of now, all the bubbles are of the same size because we have only one field in this map which indicates the location. I want to change the bubble size based on the amount. So while this is selected, I click on amount and then the individual sizes will change based on the amount itself. So in short, we created a nice looking report very quickly. But that's not all. There is more. Now let's say I want to see how people are spending on food. When I click on the area called food, that itself becomes a filter and everything else gets filtered by it. So what bubbles we are seeing now are only filtered on food. Notice the numbers have changed here, the numbers have changed here as well. So bottom line is anything which is plotted is a filter. If you want to select multiple, I can do control click as well. The same thing works in map as well. So if I click on a particular city, it's going to give you the revenue of that city and everything else will get filtered accordingly. So now we have finalized the report. Let's publish it. Before that, if you want to save all this configuration locally, you can just say file save, in which case it saves a PBX file. I'm going to save it as a simple demo. Now let's publish it so that we can see it on browser and share it with others. So I'm going to publish it to Power BI site. Once this is published, it will give you a link as to where it was published. So let's click on that and we are back to our Power BI site where we had just signed in earlier. Now notice on the Power BI site, we have three things. We have data, we have reports and dashboards. Right now we published a report. So if I go to report now, we will see that report here. The data which was required for this report has also been uploaded under the data sets section. Now let's open our report. As you can see, exactly the same report is now working on a browser with all the interactivity which we have seen earlier. We want to share this with someone else, but a report itself cannot be shared. In order to share a report, we have to create a dashboard. What is a dashboard? It's a collection of various visual elements from the report. I'm going to click on this pin. Let me go full screen so that we understand what we are doing. This pin is a way of adding a report element or a visualization into a dashboard item. When I click on pin, it asks me what do you want to do? This is the first time I'm creating the dashboard and I want to pin it. And I'm going to do that for all of them. Now let's go back to our dashboards and see what has happened. We have a new dashboard called Demo Simple and you'll notice that whatever we had earlier has been added here. Now dashboard can be shared. So you'll get a share button here and I'm going to share it with a colleague of mine. This person must have a Power BI account in order to view the report. You will notice that there is one small little thing here which is very nice. I can actually type a question here based on what I want to look at and it will understand. Total amount, it shows me that number, but I want to break it down by card type. As I type, it understands the context because it knows our data set, it knows our column names and it is dynamically generating this. Let's say total amount by city. In this case, it is giving it to me as a bar chart, but I can say as a map. And it does the job. Now let's see what happens to the shared dashboard. So on this browser, I have logged in as the user called demo. Now when I go to my dashboards here, notice simple dashboard has already appeared here. And I can work on it. When I click on it, the report will open and the same interactivity is available here. And now let us see what happens on a mobile. This is an Android device and I want to show you the Power BI app. It's available on Windows, Android as well as iPhone. 
when you launch the app and I have logged in as the demo user here I will see that dashboard here as well when I open the dashboard it will render individual element which I had added to the dashboard also notice that it has been readjusted to fit the current screen size I see individual component of the dashboard as well as the map and the tree map depending on the type of chart you get additional features for example for a bar chart I'm going to see not just the chart but this black line this is like a pointer I can move it around and then it shows me the amount on top this is like a tooltip but on a touch device tooltip is not possible so this is an equivalent if I like a particular report I can mark it as a favorite to summarize these are the steps we have taken so far in future walkthroughs we will cover more sophisticated and complex examples but primarily following the same process so that's all for now thank you for your time do follow my blog at efficiency365.com and learn one new thing about being more efficient using microsoft office platform every day